Welcome back to my channel. I'm Juliet, and this is my channel, Mama Tried. Today, I'm going to be telling you the story of why I wish I never got my next one on implant. So I have PCOS, which is polycystic ovarian syndrome, and I had to be put on birth control at a young age to try and help my symptoms from PCOS, and I suppose it helped a little bit. I've been on birth control pills all kinds throughout the years. Nothing's really ever really worked with my PCOS. The only thing it did was give me a period, pretty much. So whenever I went into my postpartum checkup, my last postpartum checkup, my doctor said, okay, so what are we gonna do about birth control? And I was like, I don't know, what are my options? And she said, well, you can't really go back on the pill because you're breastfeeding. So we can't really do that. But what I highly recommend is the next one on implant. And she went on and on about how it was such a good implant. It's got like a 98 or 99% success rate and gives you like a higher chance of not becoming pregnant and it's got low hormones and da 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 da. da. She's trying to sell me to get this implant. And I'm not really hearing her because I don't want any implants at all. The IUDs freak me out a lot. I didn't want the next one on at all. I didn't want an IUD. And so I was like, well, what else can I do? And she said, well, we can try this mini pill. It's supposed to be safe while breastfeeding. So we'll start you off with that. This is when my daughter was one month old. So we went on a vacation with our friends. Yes, my daughter was a month old and we went to Florida. And that's when I started taking the birth control I started taking it that day because my doctor prescribed it and then the next day we were packing and then the next day we were on vacation so I had started taking this mini pill while we were on vacation this mini pill that wasn't supposed to affect my breastfeeding at all completely dried up my milk so my whole vacation I was power pumping so I was pumping every five minutes I was trying to feed Luxy she was getting kind of hungry it was miserable because it dried up my milk so I told my doctor, hey, can't do this mini pill because I took one pill and it dried up my milk. So she said, okay, well, you've got two options. You've got the IUD or the next one on. And I said, well, I guess the next one on because just the thought of anything being in there just really freaks, it just freaks me out. I mean, I had just had a baby and I had a very traumatic labor and delivery. If you want to know all of the details in that, I will link that video in the description or in the comments if you want to watch that. So I'm not going to go into all that, but it was very traumatic for me and I just didn't want anybody messing with anything. I I really didn't. So I was like, well, I guess if we're going to have to do a implant, I might as well go in my arm. The insertion of the next one on was not bad. It was more my anxiety more than anything else. Like, so she numbed the area first and then it kind of felt like, you know, zipper bags that have the little lock thing on them. It felt like she had something on there and just went eat and like cut my skin open and then she placed the next one on in there and then she put these like strips over the next one on implant there was no stitches she gave me no pain medicine anything like that there was some mega mega bruising if i have pictures from whenever i first got the next one on i will insert them now I thought I had taken more pictures, but this is the only one I could find, and I'm pretty sure this was right after I had it done because it looked a lot worse a couple of days later. After getting the next one on, I had some serious cramping. And like I said, I have PCOS, so I cramp a lot. Even if I didn't have a period, I would still have all of the symptoms of a period. So with my PCOS, I will go long periods of time without having a cycle at all. And so, um, even without the cycle, I would still cramp really, really bad. So when I had the next one on, I didn't even know what really bad cramping was because the next one on made my cramping probably double the pain or maybe even triple the pain. And I'm a tough gal. Okay. Like I really am. I'm a tough girl. I can withstand a lot of pain. 
And I mean, it didn't put me in bed or anything like that because there's not a lot that can like stick me in bed because that's just the kind of person I am. I'll whine about it while I'm doing everything I need to get done. But the cramping was awful. I didn't have a period for the first 12 months of Luxie's life. Now I'm pretty sure that that was because I was breastfeeding. I literally got a period in July. So her birthday's in June, she turned one, and then in July I got my first period, and it was awful, which is expected since I didn't have a period for a really, really long time, but that period lasted over three months. Let that sink in. Three months. I was miserable. The period wasn't the only thing that I noticed that the Nexplanon was doing to me. My hormones were insane. I know what it feels like to have all of those hormonal imbalances because I do have PCOS and I wasn't sure if it was my PCOS or if it was the Nexplanon, but I'm pretty sure it was the Nexplanon, but I can't fully blame it on that. But I will say I gained a lot of weight when I should have been losing weight. I am a very healthy eater for the most part. I mean like, I like to say that my diet is pretty much like 80-20, like 80% 80 of the time I'm doing really good and then 20% of the time I give in to my cravings. But why was I gaining weight? I still don't know. Cause I work out, I eat pretty healthy, I go on walks with Luxy pretty much every day if I don't go to the gym, so I really still don't know why I was gaining weight. So I'm pretty sure it was due to a hormonal imbalance, which was the Nexplanon or my PCOS, but we will eventually find out and I will give you an update. After having my period for two months, I finally went into the doctor and I was like, hey, this is not working out. I don't know what's going on, but I'm miserable. I can't do this anymore. The cramps are ridiculous. My hormones are out of whack and I'm bleeding 24 seven while I'm trying to take care of a toddler. It's just, it's, it's not working out. So she gave me three options. She said the first option would be for her to prescribe an antibiotic. The second one would be for her to prescribe a birth control pill on top of my Nexplanon, and the third one would be to get the Nexplanon removed, but that would be the last option. I take that back. She gave me four options, and then the next one was to just wait it out. Well, I couldn't just wait it out. I didn't want to take the birth control because I was still breastfeeding at the time, and so I just said, give me the antibiotic. I took the antibiotic, and it did absolutely nothing for me. Nothing at all. So I just kept bleeding and I just kind of felt at a loss because for whatever reason, she really did not want me to get the next one on removed. I'm not blaming my doctor at all, but I'm just putting it out there how I felt. I kind of felt like she pushed me into getting the next one on because that was pretty much the only option that I had while I was breastfeeding. Even though I took the first option and it dried up my milk and there really isn't any good options for women and it's just ridiculous, honestly. Being a woman just, <laughs> sometimes it just sucks because you just have a baby and then you've got to get some sort of birth control going on, which makes you even more crazy, along with your postpartum blues and everything else you've got going on. So it's just really rough. It was a really rough time for me anyways, because my husband was working a lot and I'm taking care of her by myself and I'm in pain all the time. And it's just not, it wasn't a good situation. And I would not recommend the next one on to anyone. I only know one person that has told me that they've had a good experience with it. And other than that, everybody else has said awful things about it and told me awful stories. I actually just talked to someone recently who said whenever she got hers removed that the doctor hit a nerve and that just and her arm went like crazy and that just really freaked me out. So I've only had one person tell me that they've had a good experience with the next one on. Before I ever even got the implant, I asked a million questions to my doctor. I was like, what are the chances that it could get embedded? What are the side effects of having the next one on? Will it cause me to bleed uncontrollably? Will it cause me to cramp? You know, and I know that everybody's different, but whenever I asked her about 
it being embedded, she was like, oh, I've only had that happen one time in all the years that I've been doing the Nexplanon implant. And it was because this girl gained so much weight that it just got lost or something, got embedded in her muscle. I don't know. But I was like, okay, like if she's been doing these all the time and she's only had one person that had to get it surgically removed, I guess that's pretty good, right? So I got it against my better judgment and I really wish that I would have never got it. Um, it, I feel like it has really hurt my body. Um, it's definitely hurt my mind. I had a lot of anxiety and I still am not sure if that was postpartum. I'm not sure if it was, I don't know what it was, but I had a lot of anxiety and depression and I mean, it was just a lot of ups and downs. Um, and I felt like it was all hormonal because I have had a lot of hormonal ups and downs throughout the years with my PCOS. So like I'm saying, I can't necessarily blame everything on the next plan on because of my PCOS, but I was off of birth control for two years, no birth control at all. And I felt great. I had cystic acne and it went away. I got my body in shape. I started feeding it good things and I was really, really happy. And throughout my pregnancy, I don't feel like my hormones were all over the place either. I feel like my PCOS was kind of pushed to the side a little bit while I was pregnant, and that was awesome. I feel like in the 14 months that I had my next one on, I was very hormonal. And that's just really not like me, but I'm not an emotional like crier. Instead, I just get angry and frustrated and according to my husband, aggressive. So I don't know. I still, I still am not sure if it was my PCOS because with PCOS, you have more testosterone than the average woman. And so I, I'm, I'm not sure if it was my PCOS or the next one on, but I will do an updated video in a couple of months without the next one on so I can explain and tell you guys how I'm feeling and see if it was the next one on and it, how I'm doing without it. So let's fast forward. So I finally decided I'm getting this thing out of my arm. I hate it. And I was so scared that it was embedded in there and I would just feel it in there and I was just really freaked out by it. So I finally made the appointment and the doctor came in and immediately before she even removed it, asked me what I was going to do for birth control, offered to do the IUD, which I did not want to do the IUD. I will never do the IUD. I do not want any, I don't. And that's not like me being scared type of thing. It's a if anything can go wrong, it's going to go wrong in my body. That's just how it is. And that's how I felt about the next one on too. And I was so scared. I'm not scared really of much. I've had all kinds of stuff done. I mean, I had a C-section. I've had my tonsils and adenoids removed. I've had wisdom teeth removal, all kinds of things. And nothing ever really scared me. But getting the next one on out of my arm freaked me out out. When I sat down and the doctor came in the room, she immediately asked me what I wanted to do for birth control. And I told her I didn't want to do anything yet because of my PCOS. And she automatically cut me off. And she was like, oh, well with PCOS, it doesn't matter. You could still get pregnant. And I was like, I didn't say that. I'm talking about my PCOS, like my hormones. And I just want to let my hormones settle for a while before I decide on if I even want to do anything at all because it's very draining to your body and I don't know why these doctors pretend like birth control just doesn't do anything to women at all and it doesn't affect your mental health and it doesn't affect your body because it most certainly can. It can make you gain weight. It can make you lose weight. It can make you nauseous. It can do all kinds of things and while I had the next one on, I was on and off nauseous for so long and in the end, it was really bad. Like sometimes at the gym, I really thought I was going to throw up and it wasn't from overexerting myself. It was from my hormones. I'm 99% sure, but 
anyway we'll get to the removal so I told her that I didn't want any form of birth control right now and she said okay but kind of like a you're stupid kind of thing and so it just kind of like made me feel bad I was laying down just like how I had it put in and she made the well first she numbed it so she put a shot in my arm and numbed my arm and then she I guess got a scalp I don't know I didn't watch because I was already freaked out but she made an incision um, where the initial incision was so that way there would be minimal scarring and she got it and she was trying to get it out right <laughs> So this whole time she's just trying to get it out of my arm and she's pushing on it and it did not feel good. Even though it was numb, you could still feel all of the pressure. And she kept making comments like, oh, it just doesn't want to come out. And I'm sitting there thanking the worst. I'm like, oh my gosh, she's about to send me to the ER. It's in my muscles. She can't find it. And she kept saying, oh, you might, I can't see it. And da, 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 da. And so my anxiety is through the roof. I'm about to jump off the table pretty much. But on the outside, of course, I'm cool as a cucumber. But on the inside, I'm like dying. So she is messing with it for literally like 15 minutes. I'm not even joking. And it felt like I was on the table for like two hours because you know, all the thoughts running through my mind. And then she said she couldn't get it through that incision. So she had to make another incision, which was a new one. So I'm going to have two scars in my arm from the next one on. So after that incision, she messed around with it for a while. She was going to numb me again, but she finally was able to get it out. And then once she got it out, she put some uh, little strips on my arm. I don't really know the medical term for it and I should but I don't because mom brain I guess. But she put some strips on my arm and I'll show you guys my arm in a minute. This is two days later. She said there was going to be a lot of bruising and it would be very sore. Let me tell you on my drive home I live about 30 minutes away from my doctor and on the way home the numbness wore off and it was like shooting pains in my arm it hurt so bad i'm not making this video just to whine about it either i just really wanted to share my experience because i wish i would have seen one of these videos before i got my next one on and i wish that i would have done more research about it before getting it because i feel like companies pay doctors to sell certain things and i feel like that's what happened and they just push them and push them and push them no matter what your condition is or no matter what your concerns are they just want to make the money and I know that sounds like crap and it is crap like I said before I have a high pain tolerance and that hurt so bad oh my gosh it hurt it hurt to pick my daughter up so I had to go over to my parents and have my parents help me give her a bath I mean it was it was bad <laughs> it was really bad and this morning I went to the gym but I just did cardio I didn't do anything with my arms because I just don't want that pressure on my arm because it's so sore and tender and she told me that it's gonna be very sore she told me that there's going to be a lot of bruising because how much like sh she had to work to get it out so let me show you what it looks like this is it it doesn't really look that bad for whatever reason right now, but this is day two. I'm sure there will be a lot more bruising that's going to happen over the next couple of days. But those are the strips that I was talking about, so they just do it like in a star. But right after they did it, they put like a ace bandage, but not really an ace bandage. They put tape around my arm. They put a piece of gauze over the incision site, and then they put tape around your arm. The nurse put it on so tight on the way home my hand was already so swollen I couldn't get my wedding ring off it was turning purple it hurt so bad and they said that they wanted it as tight as possible for 24 hours well I was by myself and I couldn't take it off and put it back on by myself so I had to drive to my parents house and have my mom do it for me it was extremely uncomfortable they should not have made it that tight there's no reason it needed to be that tight they made it 
so tight. It was like I was losing a limb. And so she fixed it for me. And then 24 hours later, I removed it. And now I'm just going to leave those strips on there basically until they fall off because the doctor said to do that for minimal scarring. And then after that, I'm going to be using vitamin E oil to help with the scarring because I do have a scar from wherever I got it. And I don't want another one, but I guess I'm going to have another one or I guess another two since there are two incisions. But it was just all around an awful experience and I wanted to make this video for those of you who feel like you're going to be put in the same spot. First time moms that don't know what to do about birth control, there are other ways you can still use condoms and my doctor said, well, condoms are only 70% effective. Well, 70% and 98%, I know that there's a big difference, but I still have PCOS and I was still diagnosed as infertile the first time around. And so I don't know if I'll be able to have more babies and we're not trying right now. All right, that is the end of my horrible, no good, very bad Nexplanon story. I really hope that this video helped somebody. If it helped you, please hit the like button. It really helps support my channel. And also subscribe to my channel, of course, and make sure that you hit the bell notifications so you never miss a video but that's everything so thank you so much for watching and I hope you have an awesome day bye